Alright, so the goal of this video is to show you how to produce a simple app using the ArcGIS or Esri or ArcGIS Online tools. Um, so we're going to start off here uh, with nothing and work our way up to a web app in roughly 10-15 minutes. So, you sh so as you'll see, this is actually a fairly simple task and it's pretty powerful. Okay, so the goal is to make a web page where people can uh, or users can look at a hillshade image to try to find landslides or slope failures and put a point at that location. So it's effectively a website where you can take an invent a, a landslide inventory and this will be for the state of West Virginia. Okay, so what we're going to start off with is creating a new blank layer that we could draw into, so or that any user could draw into. So there's different ways to do this. I'm going to use the ArcGIS for Developers website. So on this website, I'm going to go to New Layer. And this will allow us to create a layer. If you have some type of template file you want to use, like a GeoJSON or a CSV or a, or a zip shape file, you can do that. We're just going to start off from scratch. So to do that, you just go to Create an Empty Layer. OK, so we have to give it a title. Let's call this Slope uh, Failure uh, Points. Oh, I guess I already used that name. We'll call it Slopes Failure Points 2. <laughs> I've ran through this already. Um, and then you have to give it some tags. This makes this more searchable um, in your organization or on ArcGIS Online. So we'll um, just use some common tabs. We'll do Slope, uh, Slope, Failure, uh, what else do we want to do? Landslides, Geomorphology. Okay, that's that. Um, so now we have a name and we have a set of tags. Then we'll go to geometry and here you can set the geometry. So we have points, lines, or polygons. So here I just want people to put point features on the map so we'll stick with points. But if you wanted them to draw lines or polygons you could change it. Then you can set the spatial reference using um, uh, one of the, a, a code. So in this case it uses the European um, Petroleum Survey Group codes. Um, generally, if you're working in a web environment, you should use one of two uh, reference systems. So you should use WGS84 datum, which is what you know, um, like GPS units generally use by default, or you should use Web Mercator, which is the common projection used by web maps. So I'm just going to stick with WGS84, um, which um, again is uh, the code is 4326. And again, you should use one of those two codes if you're using data on the web generally. Okay, so now we can add some fields. So we would like users to be able to enter a couple of things. Uh, first, we'd like them to be able to enter a date. So I'm going to create a field called date. And uh, the alias is just an easier name. I'm just going to use date uppercase there. And then the type. So we'll make this date. And then we'll add that field. We also would want them to tell us the type of earth material that potentially moves. So there's three options, uh, rock or debris or earth. So we really only want the user to be able to enter those three potential types. So we can set that up using coded values. So I'm going to create a field called material. And we'll just leave the alias material, but we'll give it a capital M. And we'll use strings, it'll be text, and we'll use coded values. OK, so our options are rock. We'll give that a code of 0. We'll add it. And er, um, debris, and a code of 1. And, oops, what did I do? Oh, I'm apparently, oh, I messed that up. Start over. So, uh, or I guess, no, we can just edit it, edit domains. So, yeah, I sorry, I hit the wrong thing. So rock 0, debris 1, add, and then we want to do earth 2, add. OK, sorry, I had messed that up. So we'll do save. So we should have those now. All right, and then we'll move another field, which is the type of movement. So um, we'll do movement. And then again, we'll just capitalize it for the alias. And again, a string. We use coded values again um, because we have a defined set of allowable values. So we'll do a fall. 
which will code as zero. And then we'll do a topple, which will code as one. And then a slide, which will code as two. And then, la and then we'll have a spread, three, and a fall. Oh, I already have fall. Um, flow as four. Oop. Add zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, that should work. And then we'll add that field. And then lastly, we'll make a field where you can put in comments. And we'll just make that a string or text field. We and there's no defined values there. Okay, so we have a set of four fields um, with domains set up for two of them, both using coded values. In this case, we're going to make the date field required, so they have to enter something there, the material and movement type, but they don't have to enter a comment if they don't want to, so we'll leave that as not required. Okay, so let's go to next, or, or the next page, which is settings. Okay, so this page is important because you have to, you can make changes after the fact, but um, you have to have certain settings if you want anyone to be able to actually edit into this layer. So right now, this is just accessible by me, but I would like to have anyone be able to edit into it. So I'm gonna set this to public. Note, I could also use my organization, which is view. Okay, we don't need to set any groups. Uh, we have to make sure enable editing is set because if you don't enable editing, it can't be edited. Okay, so um, keep track of creating and updated features. Keep track of who created the and last updated features. We'll do that. Enable sync. That's good if people want to work offline, like on a field unit. Um, the rest of this should be fine. Again, this just controls what people can actually change in the data layer. All right, so that's set up. So if we hit create layer now, it should generate that layer. So it's create layer. Okay, so what's happening is it's created what's called a hosted feature layer, which is going to be stored in my content on ArcGIS Online. All right, so now we have that new layer. So I'm going to go over to ArcGIS Online, and I'm going to go to Map. All right, so this opens a new blank map with nothing in it but a base map. And here we have uh, one of the default Esri base maps. So I'm going to add, start adding some layers to this to start building a web map. So the first thing I'm going to do is add that layer that I just created. So I'm going to do search for layers. Uh, by default, this is going to go into your content. So there's the layer. I'm just going to hit add. Okay, so that layer's been added to the map. However, as you can see, it didn't really add anything because we haven't drawn anything into it yet. Um, what the most useful layer that we have in the state for interpreting landslide events would probably be a hillshade. So in, the, in West Virginia, we have a one meter resolution hillshade. And that's been provided as a map service from the West Virginia Jazz Tech Center. So I would like to add that service to this map so that um, it can be interpreted by users. So to do that, we have to know the address for that data set. So I'm going to go to the West Virginia um, Jazz Data Services web page and find that layer. So here we have some imagery, um, code, address geocoders, um, here we go, elevation rasters, one meter hillshade, 2018. So if I go to the REST service here, this is effectively the link to that object. So if I grab this and add it to my map, it should add that hillshade. So go back to the map. I'm going to add it. So now I go to add, add from web, and then I give it a URL. And then it, yeah, it looks like I found it and we'll hit add layer. Okay, so that added that hillshade to the map. So if we zoom in here, you can see this is a pretty detailed hillshade that's being served over as you know basically raster tiles at variable resolution, depending on how you zoom in and out. Okay, so we basically have what we need in terms of layers. So I'm going to save this map. I'm going to call it uh, slope failure failure map two. Again, give it some tags. We'll do landslides, slides, geomorphology. Um, what else? Uh, oops, realized that I spelled landslides wrong there. Do that again. Landslides and then slope failure. 
You can see it had those words already because I had already used them. And then summary, we'll call this LAN uh, slope failure data collection. And this is going to be saved into my content. And let's hit save map. Oop, apparently I already used that. So let's do three. There we go. All right, so we have a save map. But note that in ArcGIS, maps are not web pages or apps. So now we have to create a app from it. And there's a couple of different ways to do it. What I'm going to generate is the ArcGIS Web App Builder, which I find pretty easy to use because it doesn't really require like any coding knowledge, but it's also a little customizable. OK, so I'm going to go to Share now. Note that if you really want people to be able to use this map and to edit the data in, you're going to have to share it with the public. So we did that. If you just want people in your organization to be able to change it, you could just use your organization. And then I'm going to go to create a web app. Note that if you want, you could also embed this into a website. It'll give you the required CSS and HTML code to do that. So I'm going to go to create a web app. OK, uh, there's configurable apps. We could use one of those. Uh, but what I'm going to do is use the web app builder. So you click on web app builder. Uh, we'll call this um, slope failure data collection app. It, you know, it pulled in the tags and stuff from the map. And then we'll hit get started, and that'll allow us to configure our page. Okay, so you can change the theme if you'd like. Um, this theme's fine. Um, you can change the color. I'll use green, <clears throat> but again, you can mess around with that. You can also change the layout, you know, the positions of things. Um, I like the first one, so we'll just stick with that. Okay, this is the map that it's linked to. We have it linked to that map that we just created. You could change it if you want. One thing I'd like to do is maybe change the default extent so that when the page loads, it loads to the extent of the, of the hill shade or the state. So we'll do this um, use current map view. And then it'll now use that as the default extent. We don't really need to set anything else on that page. So now we'll go to widgets. OK, so here we can add some tools or widgets that make the page a little bit more functional. Now, we do have to add a couple tools if we wanted to, the users to be able to edit into it. Specifically, we need to add, a, add the edit tool. So for this first widget, I'm going to set that to the edit tool. OK, so that will allow people to actually draw into that landslide layer. OK, and we don't really need to change anything there, so let's hit OK. And then we may want them to be able to draw on the map. Um, so let's add the drawing tool. That'll work, and add that. And uh, we probably want them to be able to toggle layers on and off. So that's already actually up here in the legend. Um, so we don't really actually need to add that. So we'll just leave that. We'll, we'll want a measuring tool. We want to make measurements like the dimensions of a slide that they find, for example. Um, they may want to print something if they find something interesting. So we'll add a print widget. And then let's see. Do we want to add any additional tools? Let's we'll add a base map. That'll allow them to change the base map. OK. And note you can pick your own custom base maps if you want. Um, here it just has a, you have access to the Esri base maps. So we'll hit OK there. All right, so we have a bunch of tools. We have search bar, zoom in and out, go to home, locate if you have uh, location based services. This allows you to look at the legend. This looks at the layers list. You turn layers on and off. OK, so I think we're good there. And then under attributes, we can change the name and the icon and whatnot. So let's make up a name that's a little bit more. Um, user friendly. And here we have underscores and whatnot. That's probably not great. So we'll do West Virginia slope failure inventory app. I'll leave this subtitle there. And I'm going to change the logo. We'll do custom upload. And I'm going to grab this logo. This is the logo for West Virginia view. And if we wanted, we could actually add the link. Actually, let's do that. So West Virginia View. And that's our West Virginia View web page. So we'll go back to 
there. Okay. All right, so I think that did it. So let's save our app. You can see it's saving. So again, that will get saved to your content in ArcGIS Online. And now let's see if our page actually works the way that we think it's supposed to. So let's hit Launch. So that'll open up a web page. This is what you've generated. You've basically generated a web page with a map on it and some tools. Okay, so let's see. We can see our legend. We have our slope points. We have our hill shade. That could probably be cleaned up. That's fine for now. Here's our layer list. So for example, if we wanted to turn the hill shade off, we could. Um, we can change our base map. Just change it to that real quick. Um, imagery. Uh, we can make measurements, length, area, uh, draw on the map. Um, so the most important thing is whether or not we can actually um, add data points to this landslide layer because that's the whole point of the page. So let's see if that will work. Let's zoom in here. I'm just trying to find a landslide I know exists. Here we go. So this is a landslide in Horseshoe Run uh, just north of Parsons. So you can see fairly well-defined slide there. Here's the, the scarp and the toe. Um, so pretty obvious landslide. So I just want to put a data point there on the, on the head scarp to note that it is a landslide. So if I click on this, it, okay, it'll let us enter that. So put a point there and it brings up a window. This is the date. So I'm just gonna um, pick the current date see it is the sixth um, there you can pick a time you don't have to oh I guess you do have to never mind I'm just gonna put a time in here it's two um, material is required so I'm not really sure we're gonna say it's debris and then we're gonna say it's a slide probably actually let's do earth slide and then I could say um, interpreted large slide. So if I also could do a couple other things, note that you can add attachments. So if I wanted to add like a, a photo or I believe like an audio file or video file, I could, but it's nothing really to add. So if I had X there, we now added a data point to our layer, our first data point. So it seems like we have a pretty functional app. So as you can see, this didn't take very long. We went from no data to creating a file, then to setting up our file, going into Arc Pro, creating a map, and then go creating an app from that map in like 15 minutes. Um, there's some other things you might want to do, like clean up the legend, clean up the visibility scales, maybe configure pop-ups. But again, this is a pretty simple process. You can get some pretty usable output without having to know any like JavaScript or CSS or HTML to do any web development. So in short, I hope you found this useful and um, the best way to learn is to practice. So if you want to do this, just try to make some web maps with um, ArcGIS Online.